Welcome back, crafty friends. It's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel, and it is the 15th of March, which means today is time for another Oso oh inspired collaboration. For this month's inspiration, we use a blog post where Rachel of Stamp Your Art Out created a fun set of cards with a cute little holder. I will insert a picture of that here. And you can find the blog post linked below. Now, if this is your first month with us, every month the collaborators take an inspiration piece and create their own project using that inspiration piece. And they could take anything from it, the colors, a pattern, um, the layout, as long as they create their own piece and say how they were inspired, anything goes. So I hope that you will stop by all of the collaborators. They are listed below and watch their videos, give them a thumbs up, leave them some love. Everybody always works so hard on this and it is so fun to see how the same inspiration piece inspires so many different things. Now I usually go pretty straightforward. I chose the inspiration because I liked what they did. So I usually stick to what it is. I just make it kind of my own. The creation that Rachel created was a card holder for a set of paper pumpkin cards. And those cards were smaller than a standard card. So what I have done, I created a larger holder and I created four regular size cards to go inside of my holder. To get instructions on how Rachel made this, you can visit her blog post below, but I am going to share with you the dimensions that I used so I could create it for standard size cards. Now today, I am going to here in a little bit, start showing you how I put my cards together, and then I will be back tomorrow to show you how I made the holder to fit those cards and how I embellished each one. So if you enjoy this video today, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. I always appreciate a comment below. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below and I'll answer them just as soon as I can. I hope you enjoy this little tutorial and I hope you're having a crafty day. Rachel's project was not the only thing that inspired me for this month's Oh So Inspired creation. I was also inspired by this pin, which is a card sketch that I found on Pinterest. I will link the pin below and the original blog post so you can go check it out for yourself. Once I knew that this is what I wanted my layout to be for my cards, I went and selected the paper I wanted to use. For my cards today, I'm going to be using the Backyard Table Paper Pad from Michaels. And what I liked about this pad was that it was double sided. So I was able to get all four cards and the holder created with just three sheets of pattern paper. Pattern paper number one is going to be used for the background of the card as well as one of the banner tags. What I did was cut a rectangle from this that was 8 inches wide by 10 and a half inches tall. Then I cut that into fourths so I had four pieces that were 4 inches wide by 5 and a quarter inches tall. This next piece that I'm going to be cutting is the back of pattern paper one and I am cutting this into a three inch strip and then cutting that in half again to one and a half inches wide. I will be cutting these into four pieces that are three and a quarter inches long and then I'm going to go ahead and grab pattern paper number two. Pattern paper number two is going to be used for the other two banners on that sketch. My first piece I'm cutting to four inches wide and then in half to two. And then these are each gonna be three and three quarters inches long. The next one I'm gonna to cut to two inches wide 
in half to one inch and then each of these gets cut down to two and three quarters inches long. I'm gonna be using white cardstock as the base for my cards, so I cut two sheets to four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall, and those will be for top fold cards. And now it is time to bust out a new toy. I recently purchased this punch from a friend who sells Stampin' Up! and I will link her store and this item below. This punch is so awesome. As long as your banner piece is either an inch, an inch and a half, or two inches wide, it automatically punches that fishtail into the end. I will tell you though, it does take a half inch off your piece, so make sure to take that into account when you're measuring. Once I have all of my card bases folded, it is time to go ahead and start creating the background of my card. I just put adhesive around all of the edges of the floral paper and then I am going to start building my banner kind of cluster. So I put the dark one toward the top and the third one toward the bottom just leaving a nice even border on the top and bottom. Here I am pulling out my foam tape from the Dollar Tree. I just love this roll of foam tape squares. It is so handy to have. Um, I highly suggest if you use foam a lot and you have a Dollar Tree by you to go out and get yourself a package of this. So to adhere the banner cluster to my card, again I am using the foam tape. Once I have those squares on there, I will just stick this down to my card front. And now with the magic of video editing, all four cards fronts are ready to go. I did make a little oops there on the fronts, but I just ended up putting the banner cluster on the opposite side for those two I kind of goofed on. You'll see it turns out just fine in the end. And this video will be continued. It was getting a little long, so I didn't want to bore you with a super long video. So make sure if you're not subscribed already to click that subscribe button below and hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when I'm back tomorrow to share with you how I finished this card set. Thanks again. Bye-bye.